Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Corey, and it's great to be here, and I'm happy to see that you're watching the videos that we've been putting on our page. Um, today, what I would like to do is, as you know, I've changed over and I've uh, assigned my office management to the administrative uh, functions of, of our group so that I can devote more time and attention towards you individually and helping you to overcome peripheral neuropathy. I have a busy practice and we handle people with all kinds of chronic conditions in our office and peripheral neuropathy is uh, one of those devastating things that will affect people throughout their lives if they don't get a grip on it and get the underlying conditions controlled and, and corrected. Uh, pain is a huge, huge part of peripheral neuropathy as all of you know and it's what debilitates you the most as far as getting out and doing the things that you love to do, being able to be independent again and, and to have a life and get out there and be yourself. So what I want to do today is I'm going to talk to you about the low-level light therapy, the infrared red light therapy that we have utilized in our office with great success in addition to the nerve stimulation uh, rebuilder unit. So what I'd like to do is I want to just kind of go over everything so you understand how it works and why this might be one of the most important things that you do as well. Many people will have uh, sores on their feet with diabetes and, and amputations are just nothing to be messing with. So the infrared light works by increasing circulation. It releases nitric oxide. We stimulate the collagen production. We speed the healing rate by about 40% when we get the fuel into the cells and we get the toxins out and we return circulation back to the area again. This increases ATP production and release, which is your body's energy it used. Increases ribonucleic acid and DNA synthesis as well reduces inflammation, vital for anybody that's got any sores on your feet, any lesions. We want to get the circulation back, get the inflammation down, and as we do that, we can start to get the healing process to occur again. We want to increase the lymphatic drainage, okay? We live in a toxic dump. All these other toxins we're exposed to, herbicides, pesticides, mercury from the teeth, uh, all of these things uh, come in. Genetic and modified food, how all this stuff affects you. We want to make sure the lymphatic system, which is your body's garbage dump, it's a filtration system, can stay clear so that blood can filter through unobstructed and doesn't toxify and burden down your body's immune system. Stimulates fibroblastic activity, the breakdown of those uh, bad blood red cells and, and breaks down tissues so they can be excreted. Increases phagocytosis, once again, a clearing mechanism of the, of the uh, immune system. And it reduces excitability of nervous tissue, and this will relieve pain. Now, a pain signal will continue, your body's signal from your nerves will continue to fire up to the brain over and over and over again. And when that slows down and we lose that nerve function, now a pain signal can come back in and reach the brain. But if we have a constant firing of those pathways, and we have just a rapid impulse, that pain signal can't get through. It just can't get through at all. So that's the mechanism that we wanna work out. Uh, work from rather. Uh, next thing I want to talk to you about is how infrared and red light therapy will penetrate the tissues. This is the visible light spectrum here that we have here. We're going to look at blue light which will come back and it affects the dermis and the epidermis of the tissue. Then we want to look at the red and infrared layers that will go to the subcutaneous layers of the body in addition down to the muscle tissue. I want those muscles to fire and I want those nerves to be regenerated all the way from the deep tissues up to the epidermis of the skin layer. So we're going to look at this. So we're going to look at, at this first layer is about two to three millimeters. Then we have to get eight to 10 millimeters here and we have 20 to 100 millimeters that we can penetrate through the infrared light therapy. Uh, three kinds of nitric oxide synthase and this is super important. I know it might be a little brainy or a little uh, uh, scientific for some of you, but we have three types and we have NOS1, and this is in nerves and is involved with nerve transmission. NOS2 is called inducible or INOS, and that generates tons of nitric oxide. All right, and this repairs tissue, uh, damaged tissue, it helps with the uh, oxygenation, getting oxygen back into the cell, allowing you to function properly, and it helps with bacterial infections as well. Now, ENOS is endothelial uh, nitric oxide synthase, and this is present in all blood vessels and lymphatic ducts. It stimulates the increased flow and promotes angiogenesis, which is a formation of new blood vessels. So do you think we want more blood vessels, pumping more blood, more oxygen to the tissues? Darn right we do, absolutely. 
So this could be super, super important to get, to get these taken care of and make sure your body's processing nitric oxide properly to uh, allow healing. Now, infrared light and nitric oxide. Nitric oxide will stimulate growth, enhances the immune system, and is a, what we call a neuromodulator and stimulates stem cell proliferation. There's so much about stem cells nowadays, and I'm sure some of you might have, uh, hope, hopefully, maybe not, unless you've gotten great results. Uh, stem cells for peripheral neuropathy right now are not where I think that it should be or where it can be. So give it time before you do, it, do the stem cells for peripheral neuropathy at this time. I just don't see that the everybody on the scale is everybody's getting results with this. So um, uh, we want to look a little deeper. We want to make sure that we go through it and we correct the underlying causes of the dysfunction, the toxins, the endotoxins, the excitotoxins. We want to make sure we get, get the, the toxicity of diabetes and these other things and the medications you're taking that's caused it out of your system. Uh, we'll get better results uh, with stem cell uh, in that way, I, th I believe. Uh, Nitric oxide is important towards pain relief, analgesia, vasodilation, angiogenesis. It's anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial. Uh, nitric oxide donors such as NTG, uh, I, uh, arginine, are, they're widely prescribed. Most chronic diseases are associated with abnormalities with nitric oxide production. So super important to, uh, towards all functions of your physiology. Long-term nitric oxide problems is it will generate reactive nitrogen species and in this process it's a toxicity that occurs. We have inhibition of mitochondria, the powerhouse of every individual cell is destroyed and, and toxic and ATP production is decreased as a consequence. We get reversible binding of nitric oxide to cr uh, cytochrome C oxidase and sensitizing tissues to hypoxia. So cells don't get oxygenation, they get sensitized, and all of a sudden we start getting a numbness and we start getting destruction of tissues. Uh, peroxynitrates irreversibly inhibit the mitochondria. They get in the way of the mitochondria, the, mitochondria, the, the powerhouse to that cell, and ATP production. Uh, increases cell permeability and induces cell destruction and death. So not good things to happen. We wanna make sure that we get the body working the way that it was designed to work and resolving these underlying issues. So solutions is a combination reaction and uh, prescription. We use nitric oxide donors and antioxidants to maintain the nitric oxide bioavailability to make sure that the cells have access to the nitric oxide. We use low level light therapy to disassociate nitric oxide from the cytochrome C uh, oxidase from hemoglobin, from myoglobin, and this allows more oxygen actually to get into the tissues. Now, release of nitric oxide stimulates stem cell proliferation and differentiation. Like I said, let's work with your body stem cells and get the underlying causes corrected so that we can get you in better shape. Infrared and red low, uh, low level light therapy in healthy tissues. Uh, normally, for the normal person, this will normally, uh, some cytochrome C oxidase is bound to nitric oxide and which will inactivate it. And when we look at the red and infrared light, this will disassociate that nitric oxide from that cytochrome C. We look at increased nitric oxide causing stimulation of the stem cell proliferation, and I believe I just had a duplicate there, so we wanna make sure that we uh, correct that. But nitric oxide is disassociated. Uh, let's go back over to this next one here. Um, diabetic neuropathy. So this is an infrared, the, the thermography pictures that, that I talked to you about when we look at diagnosis. So thermography is looking at heat penetration, heat uh, differentials. Uh, we'll see on the far left how we have a lot of inflammation going on in here. And if we look at the inflammation, what we want to look at is we want to look at this before compared to this after. And as we do so, we're going to see that those hot spots are removed and we see more proliferation. Now, I also use another unit when we utilize low-level light therapy, and it helps fire the nerve itself, so we get a, a stimulation in conjunction with the low-level light therapy. But I think it's super, super important to take into the nitric oxide issues that we can really greatly help with the, the infrared and right, uh, red light therapy. Uh, more uh, thermography, we'll have a before here and we'll have a uh, after here, so we're gonna see the decrease in the, the uh, heat conduction there as we go through. Once again, befores and afters here. And 
there's chemotherapy induced. So these same treatments are used throughout the United States and they are utilized to be beneficial and to give you the results that you're looking for uh, with chemo induced uh, peripheral neuropathy and the toxic uh, neuropathies and the diabetic neuropathies. Uh, chemo induced uh, neuropathy, this is after a guy had a heart transplant, you know, so what we see before and afters. Uh, now, when we talk about ulcers, and I don't want to gross you out because I got some pictures up here that might gross you out a little bit. So, if you have anybody that's, uh, that's uh, a little queasy, you might not want to look at these next couple of slides or just uh, turn away and let a couple of minutes, a minute and a half or so go by. But we get these ulcerations, we get these lesions, and this is a mild case here. Uh, but we'll get the sores. You'll see how the nails are fun, full of fungus, and, they're, and we're getting sores in here. We'll have a big lesion on this big toe as we go through. So we want to look at what's going on. We got another sore here. We have another one coming back down here. Uh, we have all that uh, scaly skin there. It's just not healthy tissue anymore. And afterward, when we go back, we're going to look at how the sore that was here is healing. We see the sore over here is healing. Now we see over on this one, see what happened here? We had an amputation on that toe. And on this, we look at the sores are healing. So we want to make sure that we look at how people can correct these problems. This is an 88-year-old diabetic female treated three times a week. This is through Dr. Burke's site and uh, one of his videos. So I want to show you this. I don't have any uh, pictures of anybody in this uh, complicated case, but it, it will show you the power of low-level light therapy in the healing process. And so when we're, we go back, we're looking at uh, January through March, January 8th through March 31st, and you'll see this is just uh, a decayed, decrepit leg. It has no life, it appears to be in it. Uh, we have the sores, and you'll see this one's just a big one. It comes back, it starts to heal, and this is just after the first month. The second month, we'll look at this, and that sore has healed up to this point. And we go back and we look at the back of the leg here again, and we see that, that we don't have any of those lesions. So this is like I said, does things take time? This is this is pretty good. I mean, this is a miraculous recovery. And as we look through, we want to make sure that we never have anybody lose a limb again. Correct the underlying causes. The drugs are not going to do it. And by the time you get to pain management, we're doing doing uh, the the uh, wound healing. Uh, you've got all kinds of stuff going on internally that you need to make sure that, they, that you can get fixed. It's not about putting lotions, potions, motions, and all this kind of stuff all over you and putting drugs down your throat to, to get you well. We've got to go back and take some steps. But the infrared light therapy, this is the, the unit that we use. Uh, and if you have questions, please, by all means, I'm going to put a link underneath this uh, video so you can have a breakthrough call with me. And that's where you and I can talk about what therapies are going to be the best for you. Uh, in many situations, I will recommend low level light therapy. Other situations, I won't because maybe there's a better alternative and another avenue for you to take. But we want to look at the frequencies. We look at the seven frequencies. This is going to go through, you hit the start button, and we have it pre programmed for our clients. So it's going to go through seven frequencies of penetration, of depth, of healing. So frequency one is going to increase circulation, chronic wound healing. Frequency two is anti-inflammatory for injuries and infection. We're going to look at frequency three for general nerve stimulation frequency. We're going to look at four is improving circulation and lymphatic flow. Remember how we have to get that lymphatic system cleared up so that we get blood through there and oxygen to the tissues. We're going to look at uh, number five is for tissues, tendons, and ligaments and bone growth. Number six is for chronic conditions when reaching a plateau. And Number seven is for the pain control. So we're going to look at those depths like I showed you on how that red and infrared penetration will reach down into the tissues and get you well. This is the infrared booties. Um, this is fixed my neuropathy now and uh, I'm Dr. Michael Corey and uh, like I said if you would like to schedule a breakthrough call with me I'd be more than happy to talk to you. If you have questions please post them underneath this video. I'll have this video up soon and um, post any questions you have and I also have a link on there if you do want to schedule an appointment as well and we can just sit and chat. It's complimentary. I'm at your service and like I said my staff is now taking care of the administrative aspects of our uh, Facebook group so I'm going to devote myself to you and helping you to get well. If you have any questions or comments please put a post underneath the video. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.